Look, we've had um, Tory MPs, um, you know, like Nadim Sahawi, I mean, having to resign, and quite rightly, uh, after basically avoiding £5 million in tax that was due and battling with uh, HMRC. When multimillionaires are dodging tax, I think a lot of us have very strong opinions on it. Uh, we had the uh, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, and his wife, heiress to a billionaire's empire in India, um, claiming non-dom status, despite the fact she's here with her husband, who's Prime Minister, uh, the children are at school here. I mean, an absurdity. Uh, and, and make gaining a massive, massive tax benefit as a result. Angela Rayner's sale of her council house and avoiding capital gains tax um, and making a few thousand pounds is very small fry compared to that. And a lot of people say to me, well, ugh, this isn't a story that cuts through. It's quite complicated. I had to write, I wrote some notes about it today. You, really, you fill up a sheet of A4 very quickly trying to explain the story. But fundamentally, we are talking about someone who came from, came from nothing, worked very, very hard. I've got massive time for Angela Rayner on that. I don't like her calling people scum because she disagrees with their politics. Um, I don't like her style in lots of ways. But actually, in terms of her, her you know, start in life, carer to her mum, single parent, coming to be deputy prime minister, possibly in a few months' time of this country, that is, I would say, something to be proud of in this country, actually. However, I don't care who you are or where you're from. I don't think you should be avoiding tax. I don't think you should be telling lies to the British public if you want to be the prime, deputy prime minister of this country. The idea that she used the right to buy a policy, which she now massively opposes, to buy her council house, made a big profit on over 48 grand, didn't pay capital gains tax on it because it was her primary property. You don't have to pay that on it. However, so many documents, official documents that she signed, children's birth certificates um, and all like, suggest that actually she was not living at this property. Neighbours have said she was living with her husband. She's got two young children. It's the first five years of her life, she was apparently not living with her husband and their young children. I mean, no one, no one sane believes that. They weren't divorced, they weren't separated, they were married with two young children, but they lived in separate houses a mile away from each other. No one in their right minds is going to believe this nonsense. And now, despite all of her denial and her insistence that she has had legal advice that says that she didn't do anything wrong, um, even though there are questions that her the electoral register, the birth certificates for her children, and uh, and her claim, you know, about for her council tax and not being not being due capital gains tax. None of these documents tally in terms of where she says she was living at that time. But how crucially, as Mail on Sunday, they've got loads of tweets that she sent out at this time, all saying, "Oh, just got home. Here are the cats. Here's my son having his dinner at our home." And they're all clearly, because there are pictures in the public domain of her husband's house, of her husband's house. She wasn't living in the house she said she was living in. Here's the question. Does any of this matter? Does any of this matter? If she said, it's all a lie, I'm so sorry, I'll pay the extra couple of thousand pounds in tax I'm due, um, sorry about that, does it all go away? Or is this more significant? Well, I, I think the public basically have the measure of this. I think they basically think all politicians are slightly on the make, that this isn't yeah. the crime of the century and, and that she's part of that. But here's the thing. Angela Rayner with Keir Starmer is going into government at the end of this year. The Tory Most party likely. are going to lose the next election, categorically, 100%. Uh, you know, some people have said 99%. You work with Tory MPs, you're pretty sure of this. I'm telling you it's happening. Yeah. Right. Labour MPs are going to be elected in their masses. And we are going to see for the first time in a while that it's not only Tories that get caught with their trousers down and round their ankles, that there are going to be scandal after scandal after scandal in the Labour Party. And if you think it's been bad under the Tory party, it's going to be just as bad under Keir Starmer. And that is where I think we're going into an interesting place. Keir Starmer is one of the most untested mm. future prime ministers that this country's had in a long time. So are his shadow cabinet. So are his MPs going to be. And I can actually see, looking ahead three, four years, the wheels beginning to come off yeah. the Starmer pro when, programme when, quite when, quickly. When you actually put the lights on again. And, they, and Keir Starmer's talked about honesty and integrity. And he says there's no questions for Angela Rayner to answer, apart from the fact that he has not seen her legal advice, no one has seen her legal advice, that she says exonerates her from having done anything wrong. But she won't publish it, even though she's called on other people to publish the legal advice they've had. And again, I know it's small pride, fine, it's small money. But actually, I think for a lot of people, that's that, they're, that it makes, you know, it's, it's more understandable, actually, you know, people doing things like this. In terms of you can actually understand the sums of money involved as opposed to when people talk about millions or billions, which most of us will never ever be in a position. You know, we'd all like to avoid paying five million pounds in tax and be in the position that that was even something that would happen in their lives.